Hi, everybody. So we all know that high performance computing and AI infrastructure are being pushed to their absolute limits. And at the heart of these things, of course, is the network fabric. So today we're joined by Lisa Spellman, who's CEO of Cornelis Networks, to explore how this vibrant young startup is reimagining the network fabric. So first, Lisa, welcome. Thank you, Jim. I'm excited to be here and excited to talk to you about you called it. It's a really exciting space with a lot going on right now. So Lisa, you've had a front row seat to this Omnipath story and uh, first at Intel and now leading Cornelis Networks. Can you walk us through how Cornelis emerged from Intel's original vision for Omnipath? What was Omnipath? What is Omnipath? And, you know, what's motivated you and your team to, uh, you know, keep working on this. Yeah. I like to think I've had a front row seat to the whole world of the compute system, which includes the network. And it's uh, it's amazing the way the world has evolved over the last decade plus. The genesis of the Omnipath architecture really came from this thought that the existing architectures that were out there that um, were developed decades ago and had, you know, have served the industry so well, but were not inherently built for highly parallel workloads in massive scale environments. And so that was the thesis and how the, the team was brought together and said, okay, basically lock yourself in a room and take the best of what's out there in the world of high performance fabrics and consider as you do that, not just HPC computing, but also the dawn of AI. So was AI back then, did we know exactly where it would be by today? No, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would say that, but there was the glimmer, the, the sprinkle of the idea was there and it was clear this was going to be a scale challenge. So yeah. that's how the, the architecture was created and under that specification. And everything that's happened since has just further proved and advanced that thinking that highly parallel scale out workloads are, you know, the face of modern AI infrastructure. And that's how the world is moving forward and advancing. And even that name then, the Omnipath name, multiple paths between multiple elements in this high performance fabric? Yeah, exactly. The The Omnipath name, again, it was born of this thought around what are the problems that are being solved with this new fabric? It, it wasn't meant to just repeat what had already been mm -hmm. invented. It was meant to take into account the growing sizes of data and the need to really use your network in order to utilize and improve your compute capacity more. So it's it's one of the world's greatest efficiency challenges or tragedies, if you will, how mm -hmm. much of advanced compute sits idle for so much of the time. So you, you sit there and say, even in the world's best AI infrastructure, you have GPUs sitting idle 50% of the time. In much less optimized infrastructure, GPUs can sit idle 35% of the time. And that's because the network is not feeding fast enough. So really, when you think about the things that we were tackling and approaching from the start, it's how do you deliver data? So a completely lossless network is the goal, while also having the world's best congestion management to ensure that you don't get those traffic buildups, you don't get packets that are taking way too long to get there, you don't have extended tail latencies that just fundamentally, again, leave that compute sitting idle. So that's what yeah. we're mission driven for is how do we impact our customers compute utilization and drive performance. Okay. And so from this foundation, from these, these principles, how do you drive to this next step of forming Cornelis? Yeah. So we had the opportunity about four, four and a half years ago to spin out of Intel with a, essentially an acquisition of the IP. And since then, it's been a tremendous journey. And we're really excited to be on the cusp of delivering all of our new products as an independent company uh, to the market. So we had a really strong foundation in that base architecture. Then we had the opportunity over these last few years to really dig in and study all the ways in which AI and HPC workloads are similar, but also all the ways that they are different. And their requirements are different between training, inference, and you know classical HPC. And so we've been 
tuning, tweaking, adjusting the architecture. We've been adding in acceleration for AI workloads. We've been focusing on end-to-end -end solution development. So not just the silicon, not just the board hardware, not just the system, not just the software, all of it. How does it work together so that you can get that incredible low latency that's required for inference? You can okay. get super high message rates required for HPC, and you can can get collective acceleration for all the all traffic in training environments. So features and capabilities to address all three of the highest performance data center use cases. Okay, great. So let's dig into the platform a little bit. I, I understand you call it 5000. Could you yes. could you tell us what, what is it? What, what does it consist of? And how is it evolving? Yes, I'd be happy to. So the CM5000 is our newest product to market, and it is a 400 gig end-to-end -end network. And when I say end-to-end -end network, I mean we have a super NIC uh, product, we have a switch product, and we actually have also a director class system. So the super NIC and the switch, I think people will be you know, really familiar with those concepts. The director class is a consolidation agent, and it's really meant for folks that are driving high performance at scale. And it delivers not only incredible performance, but also really strong price performance. And so you can um, really architect your network in the most efficient way possible, both data movement wise and economically. And we think that's a huge benefit and a differentiator that we offer. On top of all of this, we're delivering an open source software capability. So built on top of open fabrics and our OPX software is designed to drive maximum performance with the best ease of use in the industry. Okay. And the enabling technology must begin with the silicon. So tell us about that. Okay. Well, I'm really excited about the silicon progress that the team has made. Uh, you know, many in the industry might know that I have a history in silicon programs myself, right. even before my time at Cornellis. And so we we design and build our both our Super NIC ASIC and our Switch ASIC. And then, like I said, the whole system component from there on up. But I am just so proud of the team of the you know phenomenal work that they did that we are going to production on our A silicon or first pass silicon. That is a phenomenal feat for two complex ASICs that contain all of these features, operate at 400 gig bandwidth, and just have incredible capabilities built into them. I think we're a role mm -hmm. model company for what the fabulous ecosystem can do using industry standard IPs, high performance memory, all of that from the ecosystem, focusing our design efforts on where we can differentiate performance for our customers and then utilizing, you know, the industry's manufacturing capabilities yeah. and prowess in order to deliver a really yieldable, super high performance and first pass silicon success. So, so I'm really curious to hear a little bit more about the, the workings of it. Like, you know, where's the magic that you, that you end up delivering, right? We talk yeah. about the increased performance, the lower latency, everything, but networks always have congestion on them. They always have contention on them. How are you delivering the magic to overcome those challenges? Yes, I like that. It is magic. Yeah. So we have a stable of features that, again, were innovated on and built in about a decade ago as the architecture was born and then have continued to improve through both silicon architectural refinement, but also software as well. So again, think of that solution scale. And this is things like credit-based flow control and dynamic adaptive routing and optimal link protection and our congestion management. So again, through credit-based flow control and other you know capabilities in the system, we build towards this lossless operation. In really data-intensive applications, you can't can't lose data. That's not good. And so that alone allows us a great differentiator for performance and capability. And then you add in, again, industry-leading congestion management. And I think the easiest way to think about this is like traffic. So mm -hmm we can pace how quickly we're sending based on any potential congestion flows. We have the most advanced adaptive routing that allows the packets to know, essentially, there's trouble on the way. So the fastest point between two lines is this way, mm -hmm. but it's actually only the shortest. So the fastest might be a reroute 
over here. So think of it like, again, any type of traffic situation, Waze will tell you, go two miles out of your way to get there 18 minutes faster. Yeah, are you talking here about a building like multi-tier networks or th this is a, a network where it's maybe a high radix and you can oh. see through it with the, the NIC? So we have high radix switching capability, but for the sizes that we support, so we actually can support up to 500,000 uh, connected GPUs in a system. That's a pretty big size system. That's not an average deployment, but we have the capability to do so. And to do that, you would add tiers of networking. So where you see the performance is the connection from the NIC into the switch and then the switch to switch communication. So it's a combination of both. And when I say we're end to end, it, it is that system solution that says you take the adapter, you take the switch and the architecture benefits across the, the fabric. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm curious also about then whether first how, how this performs against the other guys, maybe, yeah. you know, InfiniBand or this new flavors of Ethernet that we see emerging. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great question because the industry talks a lot about customers that want alternatives and they want choice, but it's a little more nuanced than that. I think Jim, because mm -hmm. what customers want is alternatives and choice with mm -hmm. performance. It has to meet their requirements. So when you take our 400 gig network, our CN 5,000, and in the same compute environment, the exact same system compute memory, all of that, and you compare it to a 400 gig InfiniBand network, you see double the message rates and 35% lower latency at the exact same network bandwidth. So to me, that's a sign of architectural correctness for these workloads. So you're getting those micro benchmarks that demonstrate how it'll impact your application. So then you go to the application side and I'll just give you, this is an HPC example, but in the HPC space, you see up to 30% higher application performance. So if you think about that, that's again, exact same compute configuration. And the only swap out is the network. And what this starts to show and, and build for customers is the realization that a dollar that you spend on a higher performance network is actually worth more than a dollar of adding compute. So when you can take a very expensive GPU and you right. can take its utilization from that 35% up to 45% or 50% or 60% through the network, that is going to have a massive payoff versus what it costs to just add more GPUs. Yeah, so you've mentioned these AI workloads several times. Yeah. Are the workloads tuned for the network or is the network tuned for the for the workloads or are they kind of transparent one to the other? Yeah, I would say the network tunes to the workloads. Like I hadn't really thought about that, asking all the workloads to tune to us to design around the network, but I think it's it's more our obligation. So when we think of, like I was giving the example of the work we're doing to to demonstrate and show how we accelerate uh, collectives performance and that all to all traffic. So we're modeling now that we can, we can in, in large scale show a six X performance improvement in that collectives traffic communication compared to a 400 gig ethernet type product as well. Right. So that, but that's us tuning for the workload. So um, yeah, we're, we're trying to make sure that our networks capabilities can handle all of the highest performance aspects of the data center. Okay, great. So major milestones here for, for Cornella. So, you yeah. know, congrats on that. But tell us now, like, what's next? How do you take this and, and commercialize it, bring it to market? Yep. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's it's such an exciting time for the company and we're all pretty fired up about this. So we have our first uh, several customers that we're starting into deployments now. And we're, we're blessed that we have this ecosystem of enterprises and academic institutions and scientific centers that have experience with us, not just our us as a team and us as network experts, but as us as having delivered products in the past before. So we have an installed base of customers that have used prior generation products and are ready for their upgrade to the 400 gig network. So we're all out on servicing those customers 
and now introducing ourselves to new customers. So a lot of our base is really high performance computing. And with our AI capabilities that we've expanded and built upon, we have the opportunity to service our customers in a much more holistic way. So we're absolutely tackling that with, you know, enterprise AI and like I said, all the you know, government institutions, academia, scientific center. And then I'm really excited about what's next, which is coming in 2026, which is the quick move to our 800 gig offering. And we're doing something right. very cool in that we are converging, you know, we have their Omnipath architecture and we're adding in ethernet capability so that our customers will have the opportunity to use 800 gig ethernet ethernet super neck super NICs that we have with access to the omnipath features so it's going to be a great combined product and it's going to open up even more of the cloud market for us as well lisa we've talked about the origins at intel and and so i'm kind of curious about the systems that that you guys support um whether they're Intel based and AMD, NVIDIA, all, all of the above. How does that work? Yeah, great question, Jim. Um, we support everything. So uh, we realized, again, how much optionality customers want. So we support all of the merchant silicon vendors that you mentioned. We can support custom compute as well. We can, we, we're so flexible. We also recognize that um, developers are overwhelmed and they have so much work to do to get these systems up and running. So we've done the work for them. So we've made our products compatible with the CUDA environment. We've made our products compatible with the Rockham environment. So we, again, want to focus on this ease of use, ease of deployment, like plug me in and start getting that performance. And that's really the mindset we have as a company and as a hardware software team. That all sounds really great. Lisa, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. As you can tell, I'm excited about what we're doing and I look forward to keeping in contact with you about the advancements and also your audience. Great. Thank you.